Thank you, thank you everybody for being with us um, today from across the continent and beyond. Um, it's a real pleasure um, to have you with us. We are having one of our very rare in-person events and it's very good to see everybody who is in the room with us today. But many of us um, still cannot travel, still cannot meet and many people haven't yet begun uh, to meet together. Um, so let me start by thanking um, His Excellency the President of Botswana, uh, President Masisi, who thank you so much, uh, Mr. President. You have been a faithful uh, presence at the Africa Business uh, Forum. Thanks for being with us. Um, we are starting uh, slightly uh, behind time because we've been waiting for the President of Sierra Leone, who is on his way here. He's probably having his meetings uh, before he comes there. His Excellency, the President of Niger as well. Um, thank you very much uh, for being uh, with us. All captains of industry, given uh, the deputy uh, chairperson of the African Union, my sister, Amani Abouzei, thanks for being with us. Um, all other protocols observed, I'm going to hurry because I know that the president of Botswana uh, has a time constraint and is going to come right after me. So let me just go into the uh, thrust of the matter. Yesterday we were talking about transportation, but we're not really talking about transportation. We're talking about how we revive the African continent, how we build forward, what is it that we need to do. And I'm sure that when we say this, many of us then begin to think we need to create jobs. Everybody is thinking, are they going to tell us how they create jobs? Yes. What we have seen is that as we talk about the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, we have the tendency to just talk about it as something that is going to deliver on trade. I forgot to recognize, of course, uh, the Vice President of the Republic of Gambia, who was supposed to be here, but uh, is now represented by His Excellency, the Minister Tungara. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just working on the pressure of Botswana. Um, but one of the things that we talk about very often is the service sector. Increasingly, the service sector on the continent contributes over 50% of growth. And this is a, a sector that is not well understood, not well uh, uh, complemented by resources. But when we, if Africa has to grow and build forward better, we must look at the service sector. When we talk about the service sector, yes, we all know about the banking sector and there's a sort of quick uh, focus on the banking sector, but there is two sectors that we tend to forget. Tourism, for the countries that are tourism dependent, and of course the Minister of the Gambia, which is why uh, uh, we really wanted the Gambia to be with us, and, and you will see in a few minutes why we, we, the Gambia really summarizes what we're talking about here today. The tourism sector is, uh, uh, contributes uh, in, in many cases, over 15% of GDP in, in, during the summer months of the, uh, and, and the winter months in the Gambia sometimes, there is more tourists in uh, Banjul than there are uh, 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 Banjulians. I don't know if that's how we call them. And then on the transport side, we do need people to help us. We, we do need people to sort of take the goods around. We talk about the CFT and the CFT as potential. But let me just give you a few numbers about why we are talking about this. If we were able to ensure that our transport sector works well, we could create 160 million jobs. And I think if there's a message that we want to take away from here when we talk about what is it that we need to do to create jobs for our youth, how do we revive Africa's economy? This is, I'll come to the billions of dollars, but first of all, let's talk about the jobs that we need to create because that is how we grow prosperity. People get jobs, people have a constant income, and then we can grow the economies. Now, where would those jobs come from and what do we need to do? As we know, trade requires, even when you do it on the internet, it requires still that you take a fiscal commodity from point A to point B. To do that, we need railroads, airlines, and shipping. And when we look at the continent today, we still need two million trucks if we were going to be able to generate the kind of ambition that the CFTA uh, is promising. We still, we are in a deficit of two million trucks to move goods uh, across the continent. So if you just think about it, and, and, and we can see that in many of our ports, you know, the trucks that are waiting either to service one uh, part of our continent or another, this is going to cost $340 billion. So there is the investment for the private sector. It's a no-brainer that if we have those kinds of investments, we will get to where we want to, to go to. On cargo and aircraft, yes, for those of us who live in Ethiopia, when you land, you see, you know, a hundred million, a hundred fleet of uh, uh, airplanes, and you think, wow, that's a lot. But we need three, four, five times of that on this continent for the CF CFTA to actually work. We need 243 more cargo planes on the continent at $25 billion to actually let 
the CFTA meet its potential. So again, investments in airlines. Today, when you compare our train and our railways, and there is a lot of discussion, and uh, my sister knows about this standard gauge, normal gauge, how should the trains work, what is the interconnectivity, and the PIDA programs have some of this, we are nowhere near where we need to be if really we want to get uh, intra-Africa trade uh, uh, going. And as, you, as we talk about what we, more we need, we're beginning to understand why intra-Africa trade is not doing so well, because we do not have the infrastructure, even if we have the goods. And, and it's not uncommon that flowers leave Kenya and go to the Netherlands and then leave the Netherlands back to Gabon. It is happening because we don't have the infrastructure. So we are creating jobs, not that we don't want to create jobs in the Netherlands, but we would rather create them on the continent. And if we were taking the flowers from Kenya directly into Gabon, essentially all the value add will happen on our continent and we will be able to create jobs. And this is the virtuous circle. So I have, I, I have been quoted as saying Africa doesn't need a Marshall Plan because we have the CFTA. This is our plan. This is the plan for recovery. And here we're just talking about the roads and the transport sec segment of the CFTA. We could talk about the internet segment and, and, and what that will do and of course the healthcare segment. But in our rail and trains, we are only today moving 3% of our goods by rail. We could, with the uh, CFTA and immediate investments in the sector, $36 billion is what is needed to at least boost that to 6.8%. Europe has 17% of its cargo that is moved by rail uh, uh, across its, its, uh, its space. So these are the ambitions that we are looking at now. People will say, well, we just need to start somewhere, and what do you do? To upgrade our existing road infrastructure, 600 kilometers of existing road infrastructure that need to be upgraded to move the CFTA to a next level. We, and these are roads where our small and medium enterprise women are taking uh, our food uh, commodities, say from Ghana to Togo to Benin, from Nigeria to Cameroon, uh, from Ethiopia to Kenya, all these border posts where we have a lot of trade and a lot of activity happening, usually need some additional investments to make it happen, even as we, of course, are going to be working on uh, ensuring that we have one-stop border shops. And uh, my brother, Wamkele Mene, from the CFTA Secretariat, and all of us are really working on how we then improve on the fiscal and taxation policies. So without further ado, before we uh, uh, give the floor to my sister, Mani, and then to the president uh, of, of Botswana, please bear with us for a few minutes. Um, really, I think what we are talking about here is people usually say 51% of Africa's GDP in the service sector. This is what it is about. It is about all this logistics business and the potential for jobs, the potential to bring ICT into the logistics business, to make it even more uh, profitable for, for, for the private sector, but more importantly, for each African to begin to see where the prosperity from the CFTA will come from. So once again, thank you so much. We have done a report on this, uh, which is very extensive about what parts of the continent we need which infrastructure, and we're very happy with all the captains of uh, industry and the private sector and the financial sector for being here with us today, because if we begin to focus on how we finance this, then I'm sure that uh, the promise of the CFTA will more than deliver into the future. So once again, thank you for being here, and we hope that this series on uh, road infrastructure and transport infrastructure and tourism, and in closing, I go back to the Gambia where I started. So the Gambia doesn't have an airline. But the Gambia is one of the countries on the continent that has one of the uh, largest per population, per capita visitor increases. So when we talk about the single African uh, transport market, we need those open skies because you don't need to have an airline to get people to come and see the treasures that lie across the continent uh, from uh, Djibouti to Dakar and from uh, Cape to Cairo. There's an amazing amount of artwork, of culture that people can come into the continent to see, but the persistence of wanting to have national flags is actually stopping jobs being created in the tourism sector. And so again, our final plea is to say, can we come together and look at how implementing and ratifying the single African air transport market will really begin to generate jobs for the continent, open up this year, uh, uh, just ending, has been the year of arts and culture uh, for the African Union, but we can see all the arts and culture that exist on our continent if we do not let transport come in in a way that is competitive uh, for those who want to come in. So once again, thank you so much for listening, and um, I give the floor over to uh, Amani to, to take over. Thank you, Your Excellency.